the book of Psalm 119, verses 130. The entrance, entrance of, of thy, thy words giveth, giveth light. light. Uh -huh. It giveth Give understanding, understanding unto, unto the, the simple. simple. While it's you are up on your feet, just close your eyes, Father. This is me here. As I disappear, may you appear. As I decrease, may you increase. Speak through my lips, touch through my hands, think through my mind. Like a vessel of honor, use me as you want. It is in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, that is so, as you take your seats. The first thing that I want to say is, of course, our theme, our subject is sons of light. Brothers and sisters, there is a people that God is raising. Not just a generation, because we have been singing that for some time, but there is a group of people that God is raising, and these are the sons of light. And I want you to understand that uh, being a son of light uh, is one thing. But understanding what a son of light is, uh, is another thing. The Spirit of the Lord ministered to me and said, give them as I gave it to you. And the first thing that Jehovah said to me was, uh, I, God, complete to start. While his man starts to complete. Meaning God finishes. I told you I'm going to be very deep today. Listen, I'm going to be very deep and I pray you get it. Because if you get it when we go up, it's another thing. I want you to get it when we are going deeper. So God will finish to start. Are you with me? <laughs> While his men will start to finish. So God will complete first, complete it first, and then he starts. While his men will start it first in order to finish it. That means God works in a reverse order. And if God will finish to start, will complete to start, it tells you and I something about God. It means your life and my life is nothing but a memory unto God. So the life I am living, it is not something new in the eyes of God or before God. So everything about me God already, it is not just something that was predestined, but it was something that was orchestrated. Amen. Say, go deeper. go deeper. Trust me, I'm going to be deep here today. So it is not something that was just predestined, follow me here, but it was something that was orchestrated. Meaning my life, my whole life already is something that has happened in eternity. So if it has happened in eternity, it simply means uh, whatever is happening on the earthly realm uh, is nothing. It's more like a mirror to what already has taken place. That's why a lot of people will tend to miss what God wants to do in their lives uh, because they think think in their minds, God is doing something new. God is not doing something new, but God is manifesting. Does that make sense to somebody? So it is not a new thing, but is God materializing it. So if it has not yet happened in the realm of time, then apostle, where is it? It's in the realm of eternity. What is the realm of eternity? Well, the realm of eternity is what we call the realm of thought. I will take you to the Bible and I'll come back to the scripture of the day. Because when we come back here, you need to fully understand what apostle is saying. So God himself has everything planned, everything already is done. And when he puts you in the realm of time, what then determines what happens when is time. But he himself is done. You see, a lot of people pray that God blesses them. And I've come to realize that God blesses more than just men. 
But what God blesses is time. It will make sense. It will make sense in a while. That's why Galatians 4, I believe it's verse 4, it says, when the fullness of time had come, the Son of God was made what? Manifest. Meaning Jesus was always there, but what caused Jesus to show up was time. So if there's one thing that can stop God is time. You see, when Sarah was praying, this is what God said to Sarah. He said, next year, when the fullness of time, let's go there, Genesis. I, I thought I was in new life. Let's go there so you see it. You will understand what I'm about to say. I told you, for a few minutes, I might not make sense because I know it's deep. But as we go up, you are going to flow with me. It has to be Genesis chapter 18, verses 14. Abraham has all the promises and his wife, they have all the promises. But listen to what God is saying. He's saying, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the, uh, listen to this, at the time appointed. So, it tells you and I that there is what we call an appointed time. Abraham has a promise. God said whatever he said in Genesis chapter 12. We know that. We can't fight that. But still, for the promise to materialize, time must be consulted. God is saying here, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee. Meaning, just because I'm with you now here, it does not mean I can snap my finger and it happens. Time must agree with me. As much as I've given a promise, time must say yes to the promise. I feel somebody's not hearing apostle. And watch this now. If I was in the school of ministry, I'll be deep here. He says, according to the time of life. So there is time of life. So God now, he had to be specific that the time I'm referring to is the time of life. So what is stopping you, Sarah, to walk around with a bele bele is time. But the time of life. So he says that at the appointed time, are you with me here? So everything already has taken place in the mind of God. I'll give an example and then we go and work the context of the text that we read together. And I'll be scholastic a little bit there. I'm going to be deep when I go back to the book of Psalm. Now hear me very well. So if God, this will be an example that everybody will understand. If God already orchestrated all things like you're saying concerning me, Apostle, what's going on in my life is it part of his plan? I've been suffering for the last 15 years. Are you telling me that it is all in God's plan? You see, before I give you an answer, I want you to understand that there are three things that men must be married to in order for the will of God to materialize in their lives. The first thing that men must be married to is time. One must respect time. One must understand time. Let me be deep here. The Bible says uh, the battle is not to the what? To the strong. Neither the race to the swift. Neither bread to men of understanding. Neither riches to men of skill. But time and chance is given to all men. So in order for me to walk in the perfect will of God, church, uh, I need uh, to be married to time. Because everything that God, the Bible says everything that God creates is beautiful in its own time. So God can never do anything beautiful outside time. So there must be time for God to deal with me the way he wants to deal with me. So the first thing I need to understand is time. Then the second thing that I need to be married to is what we call location. Because God reveals himself in a place and in time. So there must be a place and they must be time. This will make sense when I give you an example because I'm going to be deep a little bit. Then the third thing that you must be married to is people. Because every season of your life is connected to somebody. Whenever God wants to take you where you have never been, he will bring somebody new in your life. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. So whenever God 
wants to take you from one level to another level, he will introduce somebody to you. And your ability to see that person, not as a person, but as a season, will determine what God is going to do in your life. Let me give a quick example here and just pass by. In the Bible, there is David. How many of you know David? David, David. I'm left with 15 minutes. David, not your cousin, but David in the Bible. David is anointed to become a king. Now, he has the anointment, but David does not know how to walk like a king. He does not know how to talk like a king. He does not even know how a king should behave around people, but he has the anointment. In our time, we'll say he had the grace. But what God does is, because everything has been orchestrated, as soon as he kills Goliath, God uh, touches Jonathan. Who is Jonathan? Jonathan was the son of the king of that moment, which was Saul. Meaning Jonathan was a prince. So he was the one to take over as soon as something happens to Saul. But now we see David, the Bible says, and the love of Jonathan towards David was the love. It was as if a woman was in love with a man. And they were one in soul. Why will God bring Jonathan? It's because Jonathan was more than a friend to David, but Jonathan was a season to David. So Jonathan started teaching David how to behave like a king, how to move like a king, how to walk like a king, how to talk like a king. Men are more than just humans, but men are keys. I wish I could talk to somebody right here. There are dimensions and realms that God will never allow you to tap into until you meet a man in that dimension. That's why the word dimension is the word room. So if somebody says, I'm in another dimension, they're saying, I'm in another room. And the rooms in the spirit or the doors in the spirit, they don't have handlers outside. Meaning you cannot open a dimension by yourself. Somebody in that dimension already has to open for you and welcome you inside. Is it making sense to you? That's why prophets understand and those that are in the prophetic and apostolic that in the civilization of the immortals, which is the civilization of spirits, for you to come up, you must be invited. If you don't believe me, ask John. He said, the same voice that spoke to me while I was in the island of Patmos, it was the same voice that said to me, come up hither. So he was in another dimension. But for him to move from where he was to another dimension, an invitation was given. Is it making sense to some of you? So you must be married to time. You must be married to a place. You must be married to a people. A lot of people miss God not because God is not saying it's your time. It's because it's your time but you are in a wrong place. Some of you, you are in the right place. It's your time, but you are connected to wrong people. So it is orchestrated. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, let me give this example and take you higher now. I'm left with 10 minutes. Now, watch this now. Am I still making sense to you? Now, watch this now. There is a man in the Bible, and I love this one now. His name is Joseph. We all know Joseph to be... A man of dreams, to be a man of visions, or an interpreter of dreams. But if you are going to come out and look at it with a prophetic eye, you'll pick up something that church people can't pick up. So as much as, as much as this young boy is a dreamer, he was not dreaming because he was meant to dream. He was dreaming because uh, his life was already orchestrated. So he had to start dreaming because uh, time now was saying, uh, uh, we are running out of time. Does that make sense to you? I'll give an example. We know his story, moon bowing and everything. Watch this now. He starts dreaming, and as he starts dreaming, it was that dream that deposited something in his spirit. 
So it was God giving him a word, but in a form of a vision. But that word, I want you to understand that it was not just a word, but it was a promise. You see, one thing about a promise, what I'm about to say here, please receive it because those who are watching at home will receive it. You see, a promise does not create anything, but a promise comes as an assurance so that you don't self-sabotage what God wants to do in your life. That's why scripture says his promises are yea and amen. So when God gives me a promise, he's giving me an assurance that look, I know it's crazy, but this is what I said I'm going to do and I'm going to do it. So in his spirit, he received a word or rather he received a promise. So he begins to move and he begins to walk. He's pregnant, but he's pregnant with a promise. And remember, Apostle said, God starts, it finishes to start. While his men starts to finish. But when Joseph is dreaming, God already is done. Watch this now. When Joseph dreamed, the brothers did not like it. Now, the people that he confided, I wish you could hear me. The people that he loved, the people he trusted, they started rejecting him. It was not them rejecting him. It was time. Now, not only did the people reject him, the location. Because for God to do something, you must be married to time, location, and the people. So now the location started rejecting him. And what did the brothers do? Hear me here. The brothers sold him. But to show you that this was always in God's plan and it was orchestrated, they sell him to the Ishmaelites. But who are the Ishmaelites? Somebody say, preach, Apostle. The Ishmaelites were the descendants of a man called Ishmael. Now, Ishmael was a son of Abraham. But Abraham did not only have one son, he also had Isaac. So there was Ishmael and there was Isaac. So when Isaac grew and had children, Ishmael on the other side, he grew and he also had children. So his descendants are called Ishmaelites. While is the descendants of Jacob are called Israelites. Are you still with me here? So who is Joseph? Joseph is an Israelite. So when they sold Joseph, they did not sell Joseph to strangers, but they sold Joseph to his own brothers. So it was brother to brother. Because these were Ishmaelites. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying right here. Sometimes it might look like uh, some people are rejecting you. Some deals did not work out according to plan. I want you to understand that is God prophetically directing you. Please be seated. I'm not yet there. Please be seated. Watch this now. So God, he did not just have Ishmael in mind. It, it's about to make sense. But when Ishmael was born, God had Joseph in mind. There are people that when they are born, it's not just them being born. It's because God has certain people in mind. Ah. I don't know if you're understanding it. That's why when Jesus began to preach, the question that they asked Jesus was, what manner of man is this? Meaning we can see he's a man, but there is something about this man that makes him unique. We have seen the Pharisees. We have seen the Sadducees. We have seen the teachers of the law. But now, what manner of man is this? It means Jesus was in another dimension altogether. They are men that are not just men, but they are nations. When, 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 when Rebecca, Kalina Mazovreheta, was caring, the word of the Lord came to her and said, these are not just babies, but these are two nations. 
so when Jacob was born Jacob was more than a man that's why when the angel blessed him the angel said from today you are no longer Jacob but but you are Israel say there are men that walk like this but they are nations I don't know if you understand it. Jesus went to the land of the Gadarians. And when he, please be seated. When he got there, he delivered one man who said, uh, the demons, of course, they're the ones who spoke, we are legion. And after delivering this one man in the land of the Gadarians, the land of God, he left. But hold on, why will Jesus deliver a man and the next thing he leaves? Why didn't he preach in the city? Because the man was capacitated. He, the man had 10 cities in him. That's why Jesus said, go and tell everyone what God had done. Yet Jesus will heal people and say, say it to no man. So by winning that man, Jesus had won 10 cities. Joseph now, are you still with me? So he sold to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites, they take him to the house of Pharaoh. Immediately he's promoted. He's in charge of everything. Watch this now. The king leaves and we know what happened. And the man was tempted. And the next thing is in prison. And of course, when people read the Bible, they will see two years there. But if you're going to study, you realize that the man was in prison for about 13 to 15 years. And right there, some people come. Listen, they don't get into another cell. They get right where he is. And you see, they began to dream. Why were they dreaming all of a sudden? They were dreaming because Joseph, uh, he's on his way to, to who God wants him to be. He's on his way to his seat, so to say. So they begin to dream. I'm not going to talk about that. And he gives them interpretation. And he says, remember me when you're with the king. The Bible says, and they forgot him. Are we together? But now watch this now. Oh, let's read it. That will be my last scripture. It's a series, so I'm still, we are still sons of light. It will make sense. Uh, Genesis chapter 41, 41, and you put verse 1. Somebody say time. Are we there? Right on our screens. One, two, three. And it came to pass. At the end of two full years. Why would the Bible say at the end of two full years? The Bible is telling you about time. That Pharaoh dreamt and behold, he stood by the river. Now the Bible there explains the dream. Now why did Pharaoh dream? Pharaoh dreamt because of time. So the men did not dream while least the other prisoners were with Joseph. Because at that time, Joseph would not have interpreted any dream. And notice if you may, this is not a nobody dreaming, but the king, Pharaoh himself, is the one dreaming. Because if it was an ordinary person, nobody would have taken it serious. But because it's the man in charge, everyone started taking it serious. He brought all his sorcerers. I'm about to be deep now. He brought all his sorcerers. Nobody could interpret it. Until one of them that Joseph interpreted for, uh, the dream for, said there is a man in prison. Then he comes, Joseph, and he interprets this dream. And he says, this is famine here for seven years. Blah, 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 let's prepare. And the next thing, the man was promoted. And the next thing, we know what happened. But here's what I wanted to say, what I wanted to, say to you. We see this movie and drama unfolding. But what you do not know is even the famine, it was God who caused it. The book of Psalm. Let's look at 105. Chapter 105, let's see. And we read verses 16. People love verses 15, but we'll read verses 16. And please, fasten your seatbelt. Moreover, he, he called, called for, for a famine upon the land. land. He, he broke the, the whole staff of bread. 
what land is the Bible talking about? Is Egypt? Do we have an, uh, do we have uh, amplified there? Let's read together. One, two, three. And he called for a famine upon the land of Egypt. Uh huh. He cut off every source of bread. So the famine and the dream, it was all. Uh, I wish I had church right here. So God already knows who Joseph is to be. And he plans everything. So even when Egypt was going through a crazy season, it was God himself. The famine did not just happen because it was diabolic. Oh. The devil had no hand to it. Put verse 17 so they know exactly we're talking about the same stuff of Joseph here. He, he, he sent, sent a, man a man before, man before them. them. Joseph, who was, was sold as a slave. So God here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I told you, you might miss it, but you might get it. All I'm trying to say here is, uh, your life uh, is nothing but a memory unto God. Your life already has been predestined, orchestrated. So even when you go down the hill, God looks at you sometimes and laughs. Let's go down. Verse 18. His what? His feet they had with shackles. Uh -huh. He was put in chains of iron. Now, listen to this one. Verse 19. We take off. And Until the time, time that, that his word of prophecy regarding his brothers came true. The word of the Lord tested and refined him. Please be seated. And where we have read the word of the Lord, our main scripture of the day. Let's go back there. Please don't forget that one. That it was until the time of his word of prophecy came. Somebody say time. One thing about, uh, let's go there. The entrance of what? Of, of thy, thy words giveth, giveth light, light. And it what? It giveth understanding unto the simple. Aha. Uh -huh. So I want you to understand now, which this now happens to be our main verse of today. That scripture says, the entrance of God's word. I'm going to be slow here so you hear it. Bringeth, giveth light, and it giveth understanding to the simple. All right? The entrance of thy word, wait a minute, giveth light. So what brings light and what brings illumination is the entrance of his word. And it is then that word that brings light that will cause the light to bring understanding. I then said, God, what understanding is this? Is this an understanding towards your word? What understanding is the Bible talking about? And what light is the Bible talking about? I then understood that the entrance of his word or of thy word giveth light and it giveth understanding unto the simple. Watch this now. What does this all mean? It means this, the road or paths in the spirit or spiritual paths, they must be understood before they are walked. I just don't have a right way to put it. Spiritual paths, they must be understood before they are walked. I'm not saying you know your tomorrow, but you must understand what you are part of and what you have started before you start it. So God says the entrance of my word giveth light. Light to what? To your assignment. To your assignment. Understanding to your assignment. It will make sense. Just follow me. You see, as much as it has always been like that in the spirit, it has been orchestrated until it's released from the mouth of God, it remains a thought. It remains an unspoken word. That's why Genesis 2, 
uh, Genesis 1 verses 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. It was God speaking light. But where did this light exist before he spoke it? In his thought. That's why scripture will say, As a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. As long as you are not saying anything, whatever you want to say exists in the realm of thought. And God is a God who operates and who responds to thought. I don't know if you're here. That's why Isaiah says, before you call unto me, I shall hear you and answer you. Jesus said you heard in the Old Testament that when you sleep with a woman that is not your wife, you have committed adultery. But I say unto you, if you see a woman lustfully, you have already slept with that woman in your mind. Meaning you have sinned, not because you, uh, uh, you acted upon it, but because it was in your thought. And why would God consider it a sin while it's in your thought? It's because God responds to thought. That's why the Bible says, uh, and Jesus looked at them and said, I know what is in your thoughts. Are we together? He says, you honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far. It's because they were saying one thing, but he was listening to their thoughts. Are we together? So God himself, he operates in the realm of thought, meaning my life as long as there is no word spoken about me, I do not know what is in the mind of God concerning me. I will find a very simple way to put it. Because my life already, God is done with it. But how do I know this is the path that God wants me to take? It's when his word is spoken. So when his word is spoken, the entrance of thy word giveth light meaning already now there is illumination there is light that's why I can find you here today and begin to speak to you you were messed up you were jacked up you were about to give up but as I speak to you there is light oh my goodness good God and it gives understanding are you still with me you went home you're still here so God does not need light. He is the light. God does not need understanding. He is the understanding. God does not need a word. He is the word. And if God is understanding, God is the word. God is light. And I am born of God. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Meaning, as long as I'm born of God, I do not have to wait for Sunday for a specific word to be released upon me. I don't know. I can minister the word to myself. I, uh, the entrance of thy word. I don't know if this makes sense. Who, who am I talking to right here? This side, right? Listen to this. Listen to this. Back then, please be seated. Please be seated. Back then, I had to sit like this and just hope God will send a prophet. Are we together? There is nothing wrong with that. But we are the sons of light. We are not visitors to light. A snake will give birth after its own kind. God does not need a word. He's the word. He does not need the light. He's the light. Jesus himself said it. As a matter of fact, John, when he was writing, he said there was a man sent by God to testify about the light but he himself he was not the light but he was sent to testify about the light and that was Jesus Christ are you still with me and now Jesus himself that was the light the Bible says in him I walk in him I live he says if you abide in me me in you do you see that now so it's more like I'm in him He's in me. We are children of the light. And what brings light is the entrance of his word. Prophecy will bring light. You see, what kept Joseph going is because he had the word. And when the fullness of time came, that word came to pass. So he held on because he saw a moon bowing. I don't know if that makes sense to you. That's why, oh Lord. That's why 
you read the Bible and read about. I'm closing because we are, in, uh, we are going for part two. <laughs> you read the Bible and you see that there is a woman called Hagar. Praise the Lord, everybody. This woman, we know what happened. She's the mother of Ishmael. She's in a land or in a place or in a desert. You know, translations here, they differ. And right there, she begins to cry because she was thirsty. Now, the baby began to cry. And the Bible says, and an angel of the Lord appeared and said, God had, pay attention now, God had the cry of the baby. What is happening? Then she started explaining. Watch this now. The angel of the Lord, the Bible says, and the angel of the Lord gave her a word, and her eyes were opened. And she saw a well next to her. Wait. Wait. We need to fix something right there. We need to fix something right there. So she was crying for water. While this water was next to her. So all she needed was a word. But what did this word bring? Light. Okay. Let me put it in a way that you'll understand. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. I take hundred dollars. If you don't hear this one, you need to go to Sunday school next week. I take hundred dollars and I put it here. I switch off the lights. And I say to you, look for a hundred dollar here. My friend, in my language, here utayambayamba. You look for it. Right? And you come out and say, Apostle, stop wasting my time. And I'll be like, why? There is money in there. You'll be like, I searched everywhere. There is no money. Then the only thing I need to do is not to search with you. Is to go where the plaque is. And I switch on the light. And as soon as I switch on the light, boom, there is $100. Here's what you need to understand. The light did not create the $100. The light revealed the hundred dollars. Promise does not create, but promise reveals. When a prophecy comes, it comes to give light. The entrance of thy word. In this season, it will be like a movie. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me explain why I'm saying it will be like a movie. Please be seated. Please be seated. You are getting me nervous. The reason why I'm saying it will be like a movie is because you will be the main character. And God, the director of the movie. If you have ever watched a movie and you do not know the end of the movie, You'll be sitting there and you'll be seeing Don Yen being mambaraskated and you'll be moving like this and you'll be seeing bad guys behind him and you'll be shouting, run, 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 run. You are panicking because you don't know the end of the movie. But the director, he does not just know the end of the movie. He's in the movie. He's watching right at that moment. And he knows the end of the movie. You didn't hear what I just said. Gule move. Gule is the ring. I don't know if that makes sense. If you didn't hear that one, you are very slow. Please be seated. It will be like a movie. That you yourself, even other people will be like, hey, hey, she's going down, she's going down. The next thing you are in Dubai. What are you doing in Dubai? You are signing contracts. Aya. 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 Sons of light. The entrance of thy word brings light. Meaning I can be in a point in my life where I don't know if my life is moving or my life is stuck. But one word from God. That's why every morning when things are crazy, I must not focus on how crazy things are. I need to focus, is there a word from God? Is there a word from Jehovah? Is there a word from God? All I'm saying, your life 
is already orchestrated. That's why when a word is given, you have a role to play. Please be seated. Please be seated. I'm closing now. You need to cooperate. Are we together? You need to what? Cooperate. Because prophecies are not something that happens automatically. When there is an action in heaven, there must be an action on earth. That's why it says whatever you bind on earth, whatever you lose on earth, let your will be done as it is. Why? Because whatever happens here must correspond with what's happening there. So when God gives you a word and say you are no longer sick but you are healed, it means what will come out of your mouth is I'm healed. I walk in divine health. Are, you toge are we together? By his stripes I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus I was healed. Healing is mine. Ah, yeah. I'm protected from the wickedness of man. I'm protected from diseases. Ah, yeah. The hand of God is upon me. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of destiny. God is my father. I am healed. The Bible says that those who live in Zion shall not say, I am sick. Not those who visit Zion. Scripture says we are come to Mount Zion. Please be seated. We are come to Mount Zion. <laughs> we are not marching to Mount Zion. Please, when you sing that song, don't involve us. We are marching. March alone. <laughs> Hebrews 12 says we are come. Where are you marching to? As we are come. That's why another woman said in America, Apostle, I had a dream about you. It was as if you were here. Oh, man of God, you prayed for me and I woke up under the anointing. I started laughing. I said, are you born again? She said, yes. I said, I'm born again. Guess what? We have a meeting point. She said, what do you mean? I said, Zion. So we just met in Zion. <laughs> we just met in Zion. Now you know. When I, I saw Pro, Prophet Angel. I saw Pastor Chris. I saw this. I saw this great man of God. I saw TD Jakes. I saw blah, blah, blah. You just met in Zion. Sons of light. We are not sons of the night. The Bible says we are the sons of day. We are the biggest threat to the kingdom of the enemy. But now, he thrives in your ignorance. Listen, the highest or the highest level of deliverance, please record this. The highest level of deliverance is not when somebody rolls on the ground and starts saying things that are not there. But the highest level of deliverance is when your ignorance is confronted. You can roll here and go back with the same ignorance. But when knowledge comes in now, the Bible says, the rashas kalida bahansa, the just shall be delivered by knowledge. So the biggest problem we have in the 21st century, in the charismatic churches today, is we think de deliverance is demonstrated. Deliverance is not demonstrated, deliverance is preached. The entrance of thy words brings light and light shone to darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Jesus never said I'm here to demonstrate deliverance. He said I'm here to preach it. Put, put Luke 4, 18. The spirit of what? Of the of Lord, the is, Lord upon is upon me. Because he has what? He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So the poor need what? The gospel. They don't need what? Money. No, it's not me. Fight the book. <laughs> we have Ten Credit Foundation. We have Adopt a Life. We take care of the poor. But the poor, they don't need that. They need the gospel. The word gospel, there is the word eugelion. Nearly too good to be true. News that are too good to be true. Continue. He has what? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This, last, this next one will hurt a lot of people. One, two, three. To preach deliverance to the captives. 
So and deliverance before it's demonstrated, deliverance is preached. Somebody there just shook their head like, what church is this? What did I do? <laughs> because they are hearing something like, mm -mm. my pastor told me yesterday that we need to be rolling. Now what's happening? We are not saying people don't roll under the anointing. But you are confusing deliverance, right, with demonic manifestations. Scripture never commanded us to cause manifestation of demons, but to cast them out. You know what cast means? I can't cast this, it's too heavy, but I can cast this. So to a child of God, demons are so little that you have to cast them out. I can literally stand here and speak, and they are bound to go. But this thing of are not casting out. You have seen in the ministry when I do deliverance, you know, pray for people who are possessed. One minute, in fact, one minute is a lot. Five seconds, gone. I have no time to say, wait, man of God, wait, 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 wait. I don't have time for those. Why should I wait? The Bible says the devil is the mother. <laughs> you see, we know him as he, but when it comes to lies, the Bible says he's a mother. Have you seen he being a mother? It's in the Bible. He's the mother of lies. Not she is. He is the mother. He had the ability and the womb to carry lies. So why would you believe something that comes out from a demon? I was in revival in the year 2007. I'm busy ministering and we are delivering people. And this man of God went to this guy, began to pray for him. This guy was manifesting. And as he was manifesting, he was just saying a whole lot of things. And I heard the man of God say, why are you here? And the demons inside that person spoke and said, we want to make him a millionaire. The man of God said, huh? And he said, we want to make him a millionaire. And the man of God whispered, come out of him, enter me. <sighs> From that day, I said, never again. Talk to these things. <laughs> Those things, they lie. They will tell you we lived with Elijah in the water one million years ago. Oh my goodness. And the church will be like, ah, there is power there. Study to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm not against deliverance. Because your face is here. <laughs> I know I've offended so many people. We do deliverance in the church. But I'm telling you, facts have no feelings. We are the sons of light. Did, did light negotiate with darkness? And the Bible says, and light shone into darkness. Darkness comprehended it not. Handled it not. Stood against it not. That's who we are. In our sphere of influence. That's who we are. When there are businessmen, businesswomen sitting, when I enter, I enter as a daughter, as a son of light. It does not matter the matter. When I go to sleep, I'm not thinking of witches hijacking me. I'm thinking of angels. You see the difference right now? Some of you today, in the morning, you are being pulled by your leg, by your hair. You woke up very tired. There is an error. Angels are creatures of light. You know why you can't see angels? It's because of the amount of light you have. Uh -uh. Hagar had a well next to her. The entrance of thy word brings light. Light had to enter her, which was the word, for her to see the well that was next to her. Meaning she could have died if the word did not come to her. Are we together? So the amount of word determines the amount of light in you. And angels hearken to the voice of his word. And his word brings light. And angels only hearken to the voice of his word. Meaning they hearken to light. Angels are forever with us. Them appearing, they were not created at that moment. 
It was just light that came to us. It's possible. We know Balaam in the Bible. Ah, that man, he was beating his donkey like this. His donkey was like, I'm not moving. There is an angel here. He beat his donkey. He's beat. The Bible says he could not see his donkey. He, he, he could not see the angel. He was beating that donkey. That donkey is like, how long have I been carrying you up and down? Now you are beating me. He was shocked at the donkey speaking. The donkey says, there is an angel here. So I can't move. Imagine. He himself. Meaning there can be something there and not see it. We are not sons of the night. We are sons of the day. Sons of light. Believe it. Walk in it. When you wake up in the morning, the blessing of God's word has rested upon me. Not is, has rested upon me. Promotion is mine. Good health is mine. Increase is mine. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Watch this now. I'm blessed in Cape Town. I'm blessed in USA. I'm blessed in Nigeria. I'm blessed in Randbeck. I'm blessed in Northwest. I'm blessed in Kimberley. I'm blessed in Cape Town. I'm finding favor with men. I'm finding favor with God. I want to pray for people. <laughs> Put your hands together for Jesus. Listen. It shall be like a dream. What God wants to do through you, in you, for you, is beyond what you yourself had anticipated. You have seen testimonies every day. You have seen somebody saying this and saying that, saying that. That should encourage you that God is in the neighborhood. Meaning God is right where I am. In this ministry, we have seen people in debt, coming out of debt. You know, FNB questioned us when a lady received 1.2 million. She didn't know where it came from. She said, I was in that church. They were praying. Are we together? Yes, and we said, we can't explain it too. All I'm saying is, don't conceptualize God. Yes. I hate it with passion when somebody tells me what God can do and what God cannot do. When somebody, because your faith tells you, he will give you a one bedroom and somebody says three bedroom and you say, no, 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 that's too much. No. God works with the capacity you give him. What you give him is what he works with. And in a generation of I receive, back to differ. Be somebody who says, I conceive. And after conceiving it, and you pray for wisdom to materialize it. Do you know that in the Bible, God hates lazy people? <laughs> I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. No problem. You have received the ability. That's what the Bible says. It is the Lord God who gives you the ability to be rich. He doesn't make you rich. He gives you the ability. Meaning you can have the ability and be broke. Uh -uh. Meaning, the Bible says, he's the Lord God who gives you power to become wealthy. That's Deuteronomy. Meaning you can be a powerful, poor Christian. You have the power, but you're poor. That's why in this church, I tell you every day that we make things happen. We knock on the doors like this. We make things happen. Are we together? We pray and we watch. On Sunday, we are priests. Monday to Saturday, we are kings. Uh, you didn't hear it. You must read your Bible. You must read your Bible. <laughs> you must read your Bible so that preaching can be easy for us. It says you are kings and priests. On Monday, we are priests. On, on Sunday. Then Monday to Saturday, we are kings. 
Last week we were prophesying. Last of last week we were prophesying. Right now, receive this prophecy. This is your year of flourishing. Doors that you did not know existed will open for you. Some of you right now, you are wondering, God, what will become of me? Hear the word of the Lord. This is your year of flourishing. Believe it. Because once you believe it, that settles it. Lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. If you can lift up your hands quickly, up high. And I want you to agree with me in the Holy Ghost. As I pray for you. Scripture says, it is not by might nor by power. But it is by the Spirit of God. Says the Lord of hosts. Listen, you are going to move with the speed of the Spirit. And when they ask you, but how? I hear you responding, it is not by might nor by power. You will put your mind to it and it shall happen. Yes, you will put your hand to it and it shall prosper. Yes, the Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in favor with men and favor with God. This season that we are in, you are growing in favor with men and favor with God. Yes, Lift up your hands up high. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We exalt you and we magnify you. Your word is forever settled in the heavens. You speak and it's established. You spoke to us this afternoon. And you said, you know our lives. It has been predestined. It has been planned already. We need to trust the word you give us. And we pray as a church and as a people that we shall walk in the word that you have given us. Strength to those that are weak. Healing power to those that are sick. Riches to those that are poor. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. In your life, let there be light. In your academics, let there be light. At your workplace, let there be light. In your career, let there be light. In your business, let there be light. In your family, let there be light. In your marriage, let there be light. In your relationship, let there be light. In your finances, let there be light. In your gifting, in your calling, let there be light. Paul says, for the grace of God in my life was not in vain. I pray that the grace of God in your life will not be in vain. You shall walk in the reality of the word of God. I feel in my spirit that God is raising a people, a generation called the sons of light. And you are one of them. I don't know who I'm praying for. But get ready for a shift in your life. A shift in your children's life. A shift in your wife's life. Lack will remove his hand of your life. There shall be nothing lacking. There shall be nothing missing. There shall be nothing broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. The one who died and came back to life after three days. Just as he came back to life. Let there be resurrection. I hear the Lord say, I'm restoring people here today. I take you back to the first love. I said, I take you back to the first love. Receive fresh anointing. Receive fresh fire. 
you will go home charged. You yourself, you will wonder what really happened to me. Because what God is doing from now onwards will be unexplainable. Increment is yours. I see great increase. And I speak it over your life. I said I speak it over your life. You shall increase. Left, right, center, you shall increase. 